So we'll talk about some uh, specifics. Uh, so what do we see in our clinic? Well, osteopenia and osteoporosis, which is disease of the bones, is extremely prevalent in patients who have celiac disease and gluten intolerance. And so this is our recipe in general. So we're trying not to use drugs. Uh, for several reasons. Uh, so the mainstream drugs for osteoporosis and osteopenia are bisphosphonates, such as Fosamax, Actonel, and Beniva. So uh, these drugs are not very compatible uh, with uh, patients who have uh, gluten intolerance and celiac disease because they can cause ulcers. Uh, and in Europe, apparently, these drugs are prohibited for patients who have celiac disease. So uh, the second side effect from the drugs, uh, frequent calcium deposits, painful calcium deposits in the joints, and so we prefer to stay away from bisphosphonates in our patients. So vitamin D, uh, in general, if you want to be on the top, uh, the dose of vitamin D uh, needs to be adjusted to the blood level of vitamin D. So, but if you ask me a generic question, what's the minimal dose? So the minimal dose is 2,000 units a day. Uh, calcium, which is another vital mineral for those who have osteopenia and osteoporosis. Uh, right now, there are a lot of debates uh, whether to use calcium or not. Uh, last year, there were some negative publications about calcium and risk of uh, atherosclerosis and calcified blood vessels, especially in women who are taking calcium at the dose above 1,500 milligrams a day. So in our practice, we're using calcium uh, in a dose 500 and below, so typically 250, 500 milligrams, and the preferred uh, product is a calcium lactate. The lactic part of uh, calcium lactate supports gut microflora, so you get double benefits from that. So magnesium, so magnesium is another vital component which uh, is kind of lacking in patients with uh, osteopenia, osteoporosis. And again, there are various products available. We're using magnesium citrate and magnesium malate in our practice. Citrate is a bit more laxative. So if you're dealing with constipation, citrate is the way to go. If constipation is not an issue, then uh, it'll be magnesium malate. So strontium citrate, uh, strontium uh, is an earth element which has extreme affinity toward bones. So when you take it, 80% of strontium ends up in your bones. Uh, in Europe, strontium is a prescription drug for osteoporosis, a different salt though. Uh, so strontium citrate, uh, we've used in our clinic for five, six years, and I can tell you that uh, if you have normal absorption of strontium, uh, you're gonna notice six to 8% increase in bone density on annual basis. So if you have poor absorption strontium, there are a couple of tricks which we're using to bring it up. Uh, vitamin K is another vital component for those who have osteopenia and osteoporosis. Be careful with vitamin K because overdose of vitamin K can cause blood clots. So be very careful. Uh, biotin, so biotin, it's a vitamin which is produced mainly by bacteria in the gut. So biotin is a vital component supporting our skin our hair follicles and nails, as well as bones. So the d recommended dose of biotin is 20 milligrams a day. Uh, organic silica and L-lysine are other valuable components. So uh, silica makes your bones more flexible and elastic. It does not increase the bone density, but it reduces the risk of fractures. And L-lysine uh, facilitates absorption of calcium. So if you take calcium and L-lysine, or if you take strontium and L-lysine, the absorption rate doubles, typically. 